Aaron Swartz joining us now from the Progressive Change uh, Campaign Committee. Uh, uh, Aaron, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. Sure. Uh, the Progressive Change uh, Campaign Committee, uh, has this been a, a good uh, four months for Progressive Change or not? You know, it's been a rough four months. You know, I think at the end of last year, we all kind of gave up. We thought, okay, you know, the health care bill is going to go through without a public option. It got killed in the Senate. They just weren't the votes. And then Scott Brown's election happened, which a lot of progressives took as sort of a, you know, really bad sign, like, oh, even in Massachusetts, they couldn't win an election. But it had the kind of ironic effect of forcing the Democrats to realize the thing we've been telling them to do all along, which is pass a bill with 51 votes in the Senate or 50 votes with Joe Biden. You know, now they realize that it's just kind of gone from this crazy idea that progressives were pushing to the conventional wisdom is just accepted that everybody's going to do that. And so for a while we were really thrilled because this meant there was a chance to put the public option back in the bill. It didn't have 60 votes, but everybody agreed it had at least 50, probably more than that, probably around 53 were, you know, was the conservative estimate. So we launched this exciting campaign to start pushing for the public option. And, you know, as the nation reported, we brought it back from the dead. And I think we've gotten it really close. And now it's down to the final stretch. And we're going to have to see if Nancy Pelosi is going to step up and put the public option in the bill. We've got the Senate on board. We've been lobbying really hard to get votes in the Senate. We've gotten 51 people. And now it's just up to Nancy Pelosi whether she's going to make it happen. Um, well, you know, uh, we ran a clip in the last hour of Nancy Pelosi saying, you know, I don't know, I, I, you know, I've, uh, I think we've uh, the time to uh, use the word uh, definitive in this debate. Uh, first of all, why did I pick four months <laughs> for asking him whether it's been a good four months for progressives? Uh, I was impressed, actually. I thought, well, there must be a reason. I don't really yeah, know so since October 15th, uh, November 15th, uh, so... Uh, uh, but anyway, we ran that clip from Pelosi, and I guess it was uh, late in the day, uh, Friday, um, you know, talking about how it's not in the bill, and she said we fought the good fight, and then we both objected to the use of the word fight. <laughs> I don't think there was much of a fight. Um, you know, and it seemed over. Uh, I want to uh, air the ad that you guys at the Progressive Change Campaign Committee have uh, put together. Uh, fellows, J.R., Jesus, we're ready for that. Uh, for those of you uh, listening, uh, you won't be able to see it, but the ad uh, sort of counts uh, one by one uh, senators from, you know, uh, Robert Byrd and uh, Mark Begich, and uh, I looked at it a while ago. Who else is in there, uh, Aaron? Oh, we got all sorts of people in there. We got some great video of uh, Jim Webb and Mark oh, Warner. Right, right, both Virginia guys, Jim Webb, Mark Warner, both of them, uh, Tom Harkin, sort of one by one counting off people who said that the under reconciliation, they would support, uh, they would support the public option. So that's the uh, that's the ad, and then it's only sixty seconds, and then it ends with sort of a picture of Nancy Pelosi saying, "Speaker Pelosi, you know, uh, you know, it's on you. What are you going to do anyway?" Here's the well, uh, don't ruin the ad. They're about to see it, Ben. Well, I'm just saying that some people are. Then it ends it. with you just spoiled it for me. All right, <laughs> let's see it. <laughs> and then it's right. it's quite sad that a public option isn't in there. It isn't in there because they don't have the votes. We have 41 Democrats who said they'll vote for it. Obviously, I want the public option. Those who want to make sure we have no public option, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Would you vote for it? Yeah, I, the way I look at public option, if it's part of the reconciliation total bill and I like it, I'll vote for it. We have to do something about competition, so I would support public option. The question was where I stand on the public option. I believe that we've got to have competition in the What is missing for you in the bill, Senator? Well, obviously, I think that the public option would have been good. I'm for a public option, always have been. This is for Ted. This is for my friend, Ted Ted. Right, I'm sorry I gave it away. No, I know. You were, you were, you were, for the listeners, you were trying to yes. explain it, but it did uh, 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 so anyway, it had uh, Rockefeller, McCaskill, Begich, uh, Webb, Warner, Cole, Bacchus, Hagen, Harkin, and Byrd, sort of in those uh, one by one, and then it said the public uh, public option is in Pelosi's hands. Um, so, uh, uh, Aaron, what do what do you think? Do you have uh, any any optimism that uh, that uh, that it can get added to the House bill? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, look at how far we've come. People said it was basically impossible that you get the Senate to ever support the public option. This ad makes it clear that we have the votes in the Senate. Now it's, you know, it's like it's so close. Basically, Dick Durbin has promised, you know, the whole force of Senate leadership will pass whatever Nancy Pelosi gets out of the House. The House already has the votes for the public option. We've seen that before. I spoke to Nancy Pelosi when she, you know, came to a fundraiser here. She told me she has the votes for the public option in the House. She said repeatedly, the only problem is the Senate. We've solved that problem. Now all she has to do, I mean, she just has to say the word. She just has to say public right, option. Well, then, then, then what, uh, you know, pretend I'm an idiot. Then what am I missing? <laughs> That's a very good question. You know, I think, I think part of what she, her feeling is is that she's been burned by the Senate so many times. She worked really hard to get the votes for a public option last time, only to see them strip it out in the Senate because of Joe Lieberman. And she, you know, she just, she's upset, right? But I think what she has to understand is that we're in a new environment here. We're in this 50-vote environment where Joe Lieberman doesn't make a difference anymore. And, they, you know, I just think it's ridiculous to say that there aren't 50 votes in the Senate for a public option. I wake, so up, I, think, uh, I wake up most mornings and dream of a world where Joe Lieberman doesn't make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Brown has weirdly given us that world. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's funny um, that, uh, yeah, that uh, Scott Brown has given us that world. What, um, so, uh, I mean, does, what's your sense of, does the, is the White House killing, telling Pelosi not to do this? And if so, why? So there was an article in the New York Times, you know, and the New York Times is not exactly prone to crazy crackpot conspiracy theories. The New York Times said was that it they by, had multiple was it by, forces with the was, hospitals, was, except was, on Iraq, right, except on Iraq. Right. But when it comes to things on the left, the New York Times, you know, generally will go to extreme lengths to avoid printing things like this. But what they said was the president has cut a deal with the hospitals to make sure that a public option does not get into the bill in exchange for the hospitals not trying to kill the health care bill. Right. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, right. that's always been what we've uh, speculated because we were just looking for some reason as to why the White House would be so strongly against it. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm just not optimistic because I've never been optimistic. Uh, because, I mean, there's, because any time you have optimism on it, it gets, it gets crushed. Uh, would you, uh, what about the, the debate inside the progressive community, which has been fairly strong, uh, about whether to support the bill without the public option? You know, I think what we've been saying is it's time for progressive, progressive members of Congress to just take a simple stand and say, look, I'll vote for the bill if there's an up or down vote on the public option. You know, it's not a ridiculous request. It's just saying, let us have the vote. Let us see if the votes are there. Okay, but it also puts it also puts people on the record. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to at all put words in your mouth, but I, what I'm uh, what I, I, th I know it's been suggested certainly in general that it'd be nice to have people on the record on this issue anyway. And by post postponing a vote or by not taking a vote or by essentially stalling, uh, then there are, you're not people putting people on the record. Is there anything to that? Yeah, I mean that's exactly right. You know, people want to know who the representatives that are willing to support this extremely popular measure, this measure that maintains, you know, like 60, 70 percent popularity despite all the attacks against it, well, you know, I think we should see on the record which representatives are willing to cast a vote for something and which are not willing to do what their constituents want. Well, I mean, I got you, but suppose it's not in there. <laughs> okay, let, do you support the measure or not? You know, that's, you know, our fight today is just demanding that we get a vote on this. We're not talking about the rest of the bill. Our fight is to get the vote on the public option, you know, and if we lose that vote, you know, we lost the vote, right? What else could be done? Right. Uh, so all right. We're going to try like hell to make sure there's a vote and make sure we get all the representatives to support the public option. That but vote. certainly uh, there, and you guys are, uh, you guys are in D.C., right? Yeah. All right. Well, so there's no sense of uh, that uh, all is lost yet there. The fight continues. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I say, it's, it's really close. It's probably closer than it's ever been before. I, no, the I, I understand the, the rules committee, and they just need to put it in there. No, I understand that the counting is closer than ever before. It's a question of whether you can get, like, I mean, <laughs> uh, my impression is you could go to Nancy Pelosi and say, we have 409 members of the <laughs> House, and that she would be like, I just 
don't see the numbers. We <laughs> fought the good fight, but it's not quite there. Um, she's like, I've been a supporter all my life. I would love it. I had street signs for it. Um, so, it, yeah, I hear you. Um, it just doesn't, it just, it seems like you could come up with any number and it wouldn't be there. But you guys have not, uh, you guys have not, uh, you, you guys who actually seem to know what the word fight means, you're not giving up yet. Even though, yeah, I mean, even though we're, we're not on a... give up initially. You know, we're going to fight this one and see, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people, we get emails saying like, oh, everybody's corrupt, there's no point. You know, everyone's corrupt, but these people, they listen to their constituents to some degree. They listen to people fighting, and we have won a great deal by fighting, and we're not going to give up right you know, a few yards away from the finish line. All right. Uh, and uh, the expedited, well, it's not expedited. I mean, this whole thing has taken a long time, but uh, the sense that we may have a vote by the end of the week, uh, uh, you still think it can be done? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think we're almost there. Okay. Aaron Schwartz from the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. It's a good ad, and uh, good luck to you. And, uh, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm rooting for you. Yeah, from the bottom up. I mean, that's, that's tr I mean, obviously at the top, in the leadership, you, the battle is over, right. with perhaps quotes around battle, as you say, but uh, it's kind of neat to see something uh, coming up maybe from, uh, from the bottom up, from yeah, the, and, and, uh, the popular up. No, it's great, and, and in, in the sense that, uh, that it, it, you know, it's much harder because of guys like Aaron and the Progressive Change Campaign Committee for Nancy Pelosi to get away with what she said on Friday and to come up with that sort of minute 50 ridiculous explanation of, you know, ever since I was in Baltimore, and I my first the, words were my first thoughts were public option, Papa. You know, and you know, and then and then she's like, because here with the exchanges, we have the the option, the public, because the option of public with the exchanges, not the price was good, but we fought hard with the, and that was I wanted it, did we fought, and you know, and she just talks, and then it's now, you know, but these guys sort of. You know, they remind her, hey, look, you can do reconciliation. We had enough senators, and you said you couldn't do it because there weren't enough senators. Now there are enough senators. So do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Aaron, anyway, uh, it is. It's good. It's what, uh, it's what real sort of grassroots politics is all about. So uh, uh, good work and good luck. Thanks. I'm really curious to see what Pelosi's next excuse is going to be. No, I just sense that there will be one. So, uh, uh, Aaron Swartz from the Progressive Change uh, Campaign Committee, thanks for joining us on the Young Turks.